Hey, what's going on everyone, it's Jason, and in this video I'm gonna quickly and easily show you how to blur out multiple faces in DaVinci Resolve, coming up. All right, so we have a clip here within DaVinci Resolve, and this is a really tough clip because I've shot things before where you're in certain situations and you need to blur out multiple faces from one clip and it can be a little bit of work for sure and take time. But what we wanna focus on here is we wanna focus on our main guy and not blurring him out. People that are in the background that already have pretty blurred faces, we're not gonna focus on. We're primarily gonna focus on the gentleman walking here, the lady here, so that's two faces. We're going to also involve this person and then this lady here. So we're going to blur out four faces besides our main you know, character's face within this scene. This clip is about eight and a half seconds long. So let's jump in. To do this, we need to go inside the color tab. So let's left click on the color tab. And what I'm going to do is start with the gentleman that's walking towards us here first. So what you do is you create a shape inside of Resolve. So left click on Window. Then you're going to left click on Circle right here. You're gonna bring this over here by left clicking and dragging right to here, and then make the shape of that and the size of that fit his face a little bit better. Manipulate that and then feather it a little bit to give it a little bit of cushion as well. Then what I wanna do is come over here to the blur, left click on that. And then we've got blur radius. We're gonna left click and drag these up and you can see his face is already getting blurry. You can get you know, maximum there. We're going to go to about here, so you really just can't recognize who the person is. And then what I want to do is track this throughout the entire clip. So we're going to come over here, left click on Tracker. And what I found is that typically 3D perspective is highlighted in Resolve's blur tracking, right? I'm going to unclick that for this one, and then what I'm going to do is track his movement throughout the scene. So let's just decrease the size just a little bit. I'm gonna hit play. This is gonna go really, really fast when it auto plays like this. I and mean, I've got clip selected right now instead of frame. We'll fix that in a second, but I'm left clicking. This is gonna be really fast. And you can see how quick that was. That was super, super fast, right? Let's come back for a second. Let's see how it tracked. It did a pretty good job considering how much he's moving. There's a lot of bouncing in the frame, but I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna manually take care of some of this by selecting frame here. And then what I'm gonna do is move the mask a little bit I'm gonna decrease the size of the mask and I'm gonna left click on the keyframe right here, okay? And I'm gonna come forward a little bit, see how we held. It held pretty well with the auto tracking, but I'm gonna decrease the size of the mask again, just a little bit. I'm gonna rotate the mask a little bit here and then I'm gonna select keyframe again. Now I'm gonna bring it forward again a little bit. You can see he's already off the screen. We'll bring it to this last keyframe. And I'm gonna take this final keyframe and just bring it way off here and hit keyframe again. Let's bring it forward here. We've lost them already. Let's bring it over. And it made an auto keyframe for us in that position, right? So let's let that play one more time. Scroll forward on the mouse a little bit. Let's adjust the mask a little bit here. Resize. You can see it created a keyframe for us there. So we had some auto tracking within this, but then also manually we made some adjustments based on the first face, okay? We've already got one person taken care of in the clip, so I'm really, really happy at how quickly that happened. Now we wanna move on to a couple other faces. So let's hit S. I have S set up as my uh, add serial node shortcut. We're gonna come to the next person here, which we had the lady right here. And she's not in the shot for very long, so this one should be a little bit quicker. So left click on this, left click on circle, bring that in. Let's drag the size down to fit her face a little bit more. Bring it in, bring it to here, zoom out a little bit. Let's go to blur. Let's increase the size of that blur so you can't tell who that person is. Tracker, let's go to clip, unselect the 3D perspective, hit play. Looks like it did really, really well with that one. Let's come down here again a little bit and let's see what happens here. Tracks her, tracks her really well disappears off the frame and it stays. So we wanna get rid of that in that last frame. So let's just go to about here where she really disappears and let's go to frame and then let's bring that and just swoop it off the screen like that. And now let's watch it one more time, hit the space bar to play. And there we have another person eliminated from our shot, right? So that's great. So we've got another person taken care of. Let's come back to here. Let's work on the next person. So we've already got two down. So we're really fortunate that it's 
It's working so quickly. And we have this lady here in the back. And that might be a little bit tougher. Let's add another serial node by hitting S. That's how I have my shortcuts set up. Come here, add another circle. And this is going to be tougher because I think there's a point where he also walks in front of her. So we need to make it disappear for a second there. So let's see what we got here. Let's feather that a little bit. Let's come up to the tracker and the blur. Select the blur, bring it up, go to the tracker. Okay. We've got clip selected and I'm going to let this come through a little bit and see how much it comes through. I'm going to probably do this one manually because of what we're working with here and how much movement's in the shot. So you got a lot of movement where she disappears him behind him for a second. She kind of stays behind him and then she pops out again. So I'm going to do this one manually. Let's go frame, left click on that. Start right there, made a keyframe. And what I don't want is I don't want this to track with his shirt like that. So what I'm going to do is set a keyframe right here. And then I'm actually going to take this mask, go to the next frame and I'm gonna zip it off the screen. So what that does is it gets the blur off his chest and it's not so distracting, and then we can bring it back in when she pops in, which is right there. So let's come back a little bit, select keyframe, go to the next frame, zip the mask back over her face, go a few frames forward to see what's going on, move the mask again, I could resize it if I want to. I'm going to be a little lazy with this one. Move it again. Move it again. She's disappearing behind him now. There she is again right there. As his hand goes up, I'm going to create a keyframe. Go one frame forward by hitting arrow to the right. Zip the mask off. And as she comes back in here, I'm going to manually keyframe a keyframe right here. Next frame over, that's when you can start to see her face again. Let me increase the size of the mask a little bit. So it really blocks her out. Let it play. Adjust the position manually this time. Manually again. Manually again. We're going to keep tracking this manually. Okay, letting it play. I'm going to maneuver it again. Maneuver it again, maneuver it again, make it a little bigger because she's getting closer to the camera, right? Maneuver it again, and maneuver it again. Take it off the screen, make one more keyframe, and then zip it off of here. So let's watch her tracker now through that whole scene. And let's see what that looks like. Let's take it off of her face. Let's just see how well blurred it is, it's very good. Very accurate. Okay, there we go. So I think we have one more person to get rid of in this shot, right? We were talking about, we're gonna do four total. So let's go over to the lady with the camera. That's our final person. So let's go here, make another serial node, come to shape, pop in a circle, right to here, adjust the shape to her face a little bit, soften it. Let's go to Blur, bring it up, go to Tracker, and I think she's going to disappear within the shot, so let's try frame and see what happens here. You can see it switched over to our, our main person, right? We didn't want that to happen, so let's come back. Let's go to Manual, and let's clip it on her again, and let's rotate this. Bring it a little smaller. You can see we have a little bit of a, a lost situation there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually zip it off the frame again. And create that keyframe. And as she comes back in, she's right about here, create another keyframe and another one. And then come right back up here. Bring it back, flip it around, decrease the size. Let's go back a little bit here. You can see we really lost the track there. And again, when there's multiple objects moving through, you're gonna lose that track. So you have to come back and make some adjustments when you're trying to remove 
this many faces from a scene, okay? But overall, pretty good considering that he was moving through the frame as the main person, and we're just making some cleanup adjustments here with her. So coming back there, to just that. Continue one by one here. Make this much smaller. Rotate it a little bit like that. Let's go to the end frame because it got stuck on him again. And let's just take that end frame way over here. Let's bring this in, make another keyframe here. And then what I'm gonna do is we're gonna zip this off the frame since her face is already pretty blurry now, okay? And that'll keep her and keep that off the screen. Okay, so I know those last few involved a little bit more, you know, manual labor, so to speak, but I thought it was pretty good. We're gonna keep another uh, serial note here just for a second. Let's let this play through now. We did four different faces in that scene and kept the attention on our main character, right? So four faces pretty quickly within this tutorial, considering the amount of time it can take manually. All right, so there you have it. We blurred out four faces in a relatively short period of time, quickly within the color tab with DaVinci Resolve. We did a combination of auto tracking to blur the faces and then also manual if we needed to clean some things up. If you found this content helpful, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Also leave a comment in the comment section below if you have a different way of doing this. I'm Jason, we'll see you next time.